Today's lessons on describing categorical data has been a long-standing national conversation about policing and race in the United States. It's an important conversation, and when we see data presented on it, it's our job as statistically minded citizens to analyze that data openly, honestly, and productively. So that's what we're going to try and do here today. Today's key analysis is, what can data show us about policing and race? So first, we're going to look at marginal distributions. But before we even do that, let's talk about the data set we have today. This data set that we're going to look at is from the Stop and Frisk program. It's a New York City program that allows police to stop people on the street and search them for weapons or contraband. If police find evidence of criminal items or activity during the stop, they can report a crime and make an arrest or issue a summons. What makes this program really unique from a data science perspective is that police are mandated to record detailed data on every single stop, and that data is publicly available. So we get this unique window into these police interactions. Now note, this lesson will focus on stop rates, but there's also publicly available use of force rates from the full data set that we're gonna look at in a later lesson. So more to come. So below, we have all 2020 stops made among the racial groups listed below. So these are all the stops among these groups made in the year 2020. All data was recorded by New York City police officers as publicly available on the New York City government website. There were other groups listed in the full data set if you download the full data set, but unfortunately they did not have a high enough sample size to be included in this analysis. Um, but if you want to investigate those other groups, um, you can download the full data set and take a look. Note that all percentages in this lesson will be calculated only among the groups listed here. So this is a two-way table. That's a table of counts describing two categorical variables. Our two variables here are the race of civilians who were stopped and whether or not police found and reported a criminal offense during those stops. So a good first step is to find all the totals for the table. So I've done that here. We have two kinds of totals really. We have column totals. So columns are vertical. You might think about the Greek columns, those up and down lines. And in this case, we have the total number of Asian civilian stops. That's the column total here. There's also row totals. Think about row, rowing a boat. You have the oars going out horizontally, left and right. That's the row total. And there's finally the grand total for the table, the total number of stops described in this data set. To get the grand total, you can just add up these row totals or add up the column totals. So one initial question we might ask of this data set is, who do police tend to stop? And more specifically, let's find the racial distribution of people stopped by police. Now note, we're just looking at race here. So we're not gonna be focusing on whether or not police found criminal activity during stops. We're just looking at that one variable, the race of the civilians stopped. So this is gonna be a marginal distribution. Marginal means you're breaking down one variable, one margin of the table, in this case, the top one that is race. And what we can do is block out everything that's not the totals for each racial group and just use those totals to get the distribution. So of the 9,321 civilians stopped in 2020 by New York City police, 219 of those civilians stopped were Asian. So we can do 219 out of divided by 9,321, we get 2.3%. So 2.3% of all the stops were of Asian civilians. We do the same thing, but with black civilians, we see 6,196. Out of that total, we get 66.5%. So 66.5% of all the stops were of black civilians. And finally, we can do the same thing with Hispanic and white civilians. So a couple things to note here. Police stop black civilians a majority of the time. And if we put together black and Hispanic civilians, that's a large majority share of all the stops from this program. So natural next question might be, how does this distribution of who was stopped compared to the general population of New York City? So to analyze that, we can use what's called a side-by-side -side bar graph. So again, this is the marginal distribution of who police stopped. And this is the distribution of New York City's general population, according to the 2020 U.S. Census Bureau American Community Survey. Um, and now note these percentages are only out of the racial groups listed here. So we can go ahead and compare these distributions using a side-by-side -side bar graph. And whenever you make a side-by-side -side bar graph on the AP exam, you wanna make sure to remember title, tick, tick, label, label, label. So in this case, I have a title here, 
I have tick marks to show my scale, and I have labels here for the y-axis, x-axis, and the legend. Make sure I get full points on the exam and make sure that my graphic is transparent and not misleading. Now note, you don't need to show the exact bar heights totals, these, these little labels here on the AP exam. I just conclude that here for clarity. So what do we notice about this graph? Well, one thing that jumps out in particular is that it seems like black civilians are stopped at a disproportionately high rate compared to their share of the total New York City population. And for all other groups, it's a disproportionately low rate of stoppage. So people give various reasons for why this might be the case. And here's a quote from Michael Bloomberg, who was the former mayor of New York City. And as mayor, he expanded stop and frisk. He said, people say, oh my God, you're arresting kids for marijuana who are all minorities. Yes, that's true. Why? Because we put all the cops in minority neighborhoods. Yes, that's also true. Why do we do it? Because that's where all the crime is. So Mayor Bloomberg is saying there's a reason that we disproportionately stop people of color on the street. It's because in those neighborhoods, that's where all the crime is. Those crime rates are higher among those populations. And today, advocates for stop and frisk tend to make similar claims. So let's investigate, are these claims supported by the data? In order to get into that, we're gonna to need to use conditional distributions. So we have the full two-way table again here, and let's find the crime rates among each racial group. So when police stop each racial group, what was the crime rate that they found? Whenever you see this kind of language, among each, something like that, that means you need a conditional distribution. We're conditioning on each racial group. We're gonna look at each racial group separately. So in this case, I'm gonna block out everything except for just the Asian civilians who are stopped. So among just the Asian civilians, what proportion uh, of stops found crime and what proportion did not. So in this case, 77 of the 219 Asian civilians who were stopped had criminal activity found. And so we see we say the crime rate is 35.2%. And then that makes the no crime rate 64.8%. Among black civilians who were stopped, among the 6,196 black civilians, we see that 39.2% had crime um, found among them during the stop, and then 60.8% had no crime found or reported. We can do the same thing for Hispanic and white civilians, and you can go ahead and check my math here on your own sheet, and we see the distributions seen here. So how can we visualize these rates in a nice, compact way? One good way to do that is using a segmented bar plot. So we have here a visualization of the reported crime rates among each racial group, and we're gonna have to fill this in. So among the Asian civilians who were stopped, 35% had crime found during the stop, and then 64% had, or 65% had no crime found. So we can start making a bar at a height of 35.2. This is the proportion of those stops among the Asian civilians that had crime. And then 65%, roughly the rest of it, um, there was no crime found. The stop did not find any crime being committed. So when you add these two together, you get to 100%, which means we've described all stops made among Asian civilians. We described that full conditional distribution. And so we can go ahead and do the same thing, but with the proportions among all the other racial groups, and we can go ahead and visualize them here. So this is a nice compact way to visualize all those proportions. Now note, when you make a graph like this on the AP exam, always remember again, title, tick, tick, label, label, label. We have a title here, tick marks to show scale, and we have labels on the y-axis, x-axis, and for the key. So just looking at this and staring kind of at it, we see that overall, crime rates seem fairly similar among each racial group. We see the proportion where they do find crime, the proportion where they don't find crime. Those bar heights tend to be fairly similar between like 35, 41% between each racial group. Um, so one question we might have is, is there any evidence of an association between crime rates and race? Is there any evidence of those things being associated? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about how you would answer that if you were asked that on the AP exam. So in general, uh, do the data suggest an association between race and crime rates? When you're asked this kind of question, it means do crime rates differ between racial groups? When you're asked about an association, you should do three things on the AP exam when you're answering that question. Make a claim, this is or isn't an association. Support the claim by comparing percentages between those groups and then include context, mention the variables of the data set. 
And note for when you're comparing, always include comparative language. This one's higher, this one's lower, they're similar. So we see here that overall, crime rates seem to be fairly similar among the racial groups, but there are a few noticeable differences. So we look exactly at the numbers that we calculate in our conditional distributions. Um, we see here that among white civilians that were stopped, there was a higher crime rate found than among Asian civilians who were stopped. 41.1% of white civilians who were stopped, there was crime found compared to only 35.2% among Asian civilians who were stopped. So there are some differences here. So when I'm talking about the association here, here's what I'm going to say. There appears to be a slight association between race and the rates of criminal activity found during stops. Here I made a claim. There's a slight association. There's some small differences. Um, and I've included context, rate and race, um, race and the rates of criminal activity found during stops. And then I go on to justify this. For example, police discovered criminal activity among 41.1% of stopped white civilians, which is higher, which is a higher rate than that among stopped Asian civilians. So you see here I'm comparing percentages and using comparative language. This is higher than that one. Um, so one lingering question you might have from this analysis is, is the associ association we found statistically significant? In other words, are these racial differences big enough to prove they didn't happen by chance alone? We're going to talk about that kind of concept in a later unit. So more to come. But let's return back to Mayor Bloomberg's comments. And again, he was saying that, yes, there is a disproportionate stop rate of civilians of color versus white civilians because we find more crime in the neighborhoods where there are civilians of color. And today, supporters of stop and frisk make similar claims. So what does our analysis show about those claims? Well, we found the conditional distributions of crime rates among each racial group. And we see that non-white civilian crime rate tends to be slightly lower than the white civilian crime rate found by the stops. So among all stops of white civilians, 41.1% found evidence of criminal activity. And that rate was lower among Hispanic, Black and Asian uh, civilians were stopped, 40%, 39%, 35%, all below the 41% found among white civilians were stopped. And overall, those percentages, when you visualize them, there's a similar uh, found crime rate among stops of each racial group. So the current data does not support this claim by Mary Bloomberg and people who uh, resurfaced this claim about current data. Um, and now, for the record, just to be fair, Michael Bloomberg, since making these sorts of statements, has retracted them and no longer supports stop and frisk. However, there are people in current day who do still support the current program of stop and frisk, and they use similar claims, and sometimes they do different analyses with these sorts of data. So we're going to talk about that in our discussion question today. Imagine that someone says, hold on for a second, there's another way to analyze this data. And they take you through a different sort of analysis. So here's the same data we we're looking at before. And they just look at the stops that found a criminal offense, the stops that re resulted in arrest or a summons. And they found that among the 3,684 stops that found criminal activity, 77 of them were among Asian civilians. And so that's 2.1%. We can do the same thing with black civilians. So of all the crimes committed, 66% were from black civilians. And we do the same thing with Hispanic and white civilians. And so we end up getting this distribution of racial distribution of the crimes found during stop and frisk. And what this person says is if we look at the data this way, it seems like Bloomberg was actually right. In particular, it looks like um, people of color in this data set tend to be committing the majority of crimes, and that might lend some support to what Bloomberg was arguing and people who make the same sort of argument. So our discussion question for today is, does this new analysis provide compelling evidence for Bloomberg's claim? Why or why not?